I'll tell you, Blade HQ raced this Cold Steel AD10 out to me so quickly, I didn't even get a tracking number. I ordered it, and I feel like uh, it came all the way across the country in two days, and before I even thought to track the package, boom, here it was. And uh, I've been waiting for this one for a while, because I'm a great admirer of Andrew Demko, but his custom knives are way out of my league in terms of uh, my knife budget. Uh, and I've always admired his cold steel designs, and of course, uh, massive respect for his triad lock. I have many cold steel knives, uh, and at this point, most of them are his designs, I believe. And uh, so, always thought he was uh, cool. He's also a martial artist, and uh, he has a shop in Pennsylvania, and he's just sort of like a mad scientist, figuring out great, uh, now two new, great ways to uh, to lock up knives super strong. And so this is uh, a Cold Steel production version of his uh, most vaunted and uh, coveted AD-10 model. And uh, it is now my favorite Cold Steel knife, and I, I, got, I got a bunch of them. Uh, a little while back, I started a, a sort of unofficial policy of not buying any Cold Steels under 5 inches, because to me, the folding... Co um, I just know what I carry. And uh, I tend not to carry cold steels, uh, except for my um, my uh, broken skull, which I have on me at almost all times. But uh, oddly enough, I don't have it on me right now. Um, but uh, I do admire and love the big giant knives, and so I have a separate sort of collection of those. And uh, I just decided at one point I was just going to keep my cold steel collecting to just those giant knives because I feel that's the most uh, unique sort of selling proposition that Cold Steel has to offer. However, this sort of slavish reproduction of a custom Andrew Demko knife is just too much for me to, to pass up. And uh, so I got it. And now, uh, after having this for a couple of days and just just digging it very, very much, I got the AD-15. So that's on the way, and hopefully it just pops up unexpectedly like this one did. Unexpectedly meaning unexpectedly quick, especially from Blade HQ that sometimes it feels like they take their time. Um, but that's not a diss. Anyway, so here it is. It's a three and a half inch drop point blade of S35VN. And it's hollow ground and is very, very sharp. This thing came super sharp. I stropped it ever, you know, ever so slightly, like maybe 20 passes forward and back, and uh, it didn't need it. I just wanted to put a little polish on it, and this sucker is super sharp. And something you... Here, let's, let's look at the construction. You've got these aluminum liners and the, uh, the thick lock bar here for the triad lock. You've got the giant stop pin in there. Beautiful big thumb lugs. You've got this Contour G10. And it's a very robust design. I mean, you have this in your hand, and you know that you have something that you could do work with for a long time. It's uh, the, the Contour G10 is very comfortable. The handle fits nicely. Uh, I, you know, I, I have medium-sized hands, and it feels like you could you could put bigger hands in there for sure. You got this usable choil, and um, so you have a super robust construction here, and yet you have this thin, relatively thin blade, and uh, this beautifully thinned out hollow grind. So this thing is uh, is a tough workhorse, but it's also very uh, slicey. So of the two, the AD-10 and the AD-15, the AD-10 has a, a broader um, drop point blade. The AD-15 looks uh, slightly more slender, maybe a little more tactical. This is, uh, um, this to me seems like an all around work knife. I love this jumping up top. It's very, uh, Comfortable, I would imagine, with gloves, they could really sink in there and dig in. And I love the look of the swedge. Now, they also toned down the, the, the billboarding a bit. I mean, this 8010, yeah, that's that's kind of big, but it's it's not offensive. 
It doesn't say broken skull. It says 8010, and that's sort of cool. And then on the other side, Cold Steel is small, and it's got Taiwan and S35 Yen. Taiwan, not for nothing. They make good knives over there, I gotta say. Um, Okay, so you get to the back of the handle here. Well, let's look at the handle. It's beautifully contoured. Let's see if I can add a little bit of light. It's beautifully rounded here, and you can see where, just under where your where your fingers make this curve, they've uh, taken it back a bit. So it is uh, it's very comfy, and this whole surface is curved, making a very comfortable handle and the shape of it is is very nice so this curved handle is a nice little luxury but it presents a problem yes you probably just saw that it presents a problem with this wide clip which to me is the one sort of uh, design sort of flop on this knife I was worried that it was going to be uncomfortable like it is on the Gerber flat iron this big broad you know double wide clip uh, but it's not. Ergonomically, it feels fine in hand. The problem is that with this contoured handle, they have not curved the clip on this axis to, to sort of match the, the contoured curve of the, uh, of the handle. And so you can't really tighten it down all the way. So this, this screw spins. This one tightens down. This screw spins uh, because you can't get the metal of the clip snugly uh, down next to the next to the scale so you get this wobble and that is troubling that's one of those things that anal guys like me oh that sounds terrible but uh people who uh people who are detail oriented in terms of knives uh could that could be a deal breaker for me it's not gonna be i'm not gonna let it because the rest of this knife is so tremendously awesome and i know that uh to get one just like it i would have to get a real 80 10 and uh, you know that's not happening so what will my solution be? Uh, I think since I know I will never change this clip to the left side, even when I wear a knife on the left side, I always leave it oriented for right hand, uh, and I sort of have trained myself how to draw it and use it, and I don't have to change the clips. So I believe I will uh, yeah, just put a little epoxy under there. Kind of sucks, but I don't think I'm ever going to resell this uh because i really really like it and i just don't want this this will just stick in my craw forever even if it's solid so uh yeah i think that's what i'm going to do and if i do it i'll uh, i'll let you know but this backspacer here is a nice uh, sort of noggin knocker it's uh aluminum it appears to be aluminum uh, as are the liners and i love that lozenge shape uh lanyard hole i just think the whole thing Looks really nice with seeing the light come through the lanyard hole and this little superfluous... Well, it looks kind of like a pinhole that you might put there if you wanted to stop the blade, uh, you know, in a mechanical, in another mechanical way by dropping a pin in there. But it, it doesn't make sense in terms of uh, how it would mate up with the tang. So it's just decorative, I believe. Or maybe it's for doing one of those lanyards that comes across your hand. Anyway... I just think it looks cool with the light coming through. That's all I'm saying. You know, I'm an aesthetics guy. Speaking of aesthetics, I also like this uh, pivot. I know it's simple, but this sort of concentric ring thing is nice. It sort of echoes the uh, the concentric rings on the on the thumb lugs. And uh, I am a sucker for a hollow grind. I just I love hollow ground blades. I love the way they look, and uh, I love the way they cut. And since I'm not uh, ever prying anything with my knife, I'm never really too concerned about chipping it because it's hollow ground. Let's get some uh, size comparisons and just general comparisons, uh, sort of, uh, you know, purpose comparisons. But first we'll start with, uh, here it is with the uh, my backpack knife, the one that I keep in my everyday man purse thing. Uh, it's the Recon one. This is with the Aus 8. I stripped off that sort of paint and had this a long time mm, let's see here oh here it is with the uh, with the Explorer or not the Explorer the Voyager four inch blade uh, let's see here all right other knives that are 
sort of in the same category in terms of chunky toughness. There it is with an XM18, and there it is with a, a ZT0200. They, these two, the first thing uh, when I got this knife, when I got the 8010, first knife I thought of in comparison was this. Even though it is, even though the ZT is substantially larger, thicker in every way, it just kind of reminds me of that same sort of uh, just overly solid knife. It's so confidence inducing, it makes you want to vomit, basically. Uh, let's see, so here it is with a Sebenza. Another thumb activated kind of tough knife. Oh, here's a good one. Sort of in the same chunky, thick category. This is the uh, the F3, the Boker, what is this, Vox, right? Vox knees. This thing is a chunker. And just solid and confidence inspiring is what I get from the 8010. So, this is kind of my initial impressions. I've only, I've only really carried this knife a couple of days, but uh, yeah, let me tell you, I absolutely love it. And um, no one makes a lock back like Cold Steel, and this is like just a couple of days. It's gone from uh, kind of stiff to the point where I can just flip it out with my thumb, and it drops shut, and uh, is just one solid piece when it's open you know despite the smoothness so no one no one no one but no one makes a a lock back like cold steel so there you go uh that's my first impressions of the cold steel ad10 i think it's a fantastic knife i cannot wait for my ad15 to show up man i hope it shows up today uh but who knows uh if it doesn't i will continue appreciating this fingerprint magnet and in the meantime will most likely epoxy down this clip. That is the one thing Cold Steel needs to needs to worry about is just taking taking this and laterally curving it so that it matches the beautiful and luxurious contour of these awesome G10 scales. All right, there it is guys. Take care.